I'm going to be reading the Wikipedia page for Homo naledi. Homo naledi is an extinct species of archaic human discovered in 2013 in the Rising Star Cave, Cradle of Humankind, South Africa, dated to the Middle Pleistocene 335,000 to 236,000 years ago. The initial discovery comprises 1,550 specimens, representing 737 different elements and at least 15 different individuals. Despite the exceptionally high number of specimens, their classification with other Homo naledi species remains unclear. Along with similarities to contemporary Homo, they share several characteristics with the ancestral Australopithecus and early Homo as well, mosaic evolution. Most notably, a small cranial capacity of 465 to 610 centimeters cubed, compared with 1,270 to 1,330 centimeters cubed in modern humans, they are estimated to have an average 143.6 centimeters in height and 39.7 kilograms in weight, that's only 88 pounds, yielding a small n Civilization quotient of 4.5. Homo naledi brain autonomy anatomy seems to have similar to contemporary Homo, which could indicate comparable cognitive complexity. The presence of small brain human for so long in the midst of bigger brain contemporaries revises the prima- previous conception that larger brain would necessarily lead to an evolutionary advantage and their mosaic anatomy greatly expands the known range for various genus, variations for the genus. H. Naledi anatomy initiates that though they were capable of long distance travel with a human like stride and gait, they were more arboreal than other Homo, better adapted to climbing and suspensory behavior in trees than endurance running. Tooth anatomy suggests consumption of gritty foods covered with particulates, such as dust or dirt, though they may have not been associated with stone tools or any indication of (coughs) material culture. They appeared to have been dexterous enough to produce and handle tools and likely manufacture early or middle stone age industries. It has been controversially postulated that these individuals were given funerary rites and were carried into and placed in the chamber. In in 2022, suggestions that Homo Delady used fire for lighting cooking were reported. Discovery. On September 13, 2013, while exploring the rising star cave system in the cradle of humankind, South Africa, Cavers Rick Hunter and Stephen Tucker found hominid fossils at the bottom of the Denaledi chamber. On the 24th, 
they returned to the chamber and took photos which they showed the South African paleontologist Pedro Boschoff and Lee Rogers Berger on October 1st. Berger assembled an excavation team which included Hunter and Tucker, the so-called underground astronauts. The chamber had been entered at least once before by cavers in the early 1990s. They rearranged some bones and may have caused future damage. Although much of the floor chamber has not been walked on prior to 2013, um, it lies um, above... 20 meters, that's 260 feet from the main entrance, at the bottom of 12 meters vertical drop, and the 10 meter long main passage is only 25 to 50 centimeters at its narrowest. In total, more than 1,550 pieces of bone belonging to at least 15 individuals, 9 immature, and 6 adults have been recovered from the clay-rich sediments. Berger and colleagues published the findings in 2015. The fossil represents... 737 anatomical elements, including parts of a skull, jaw, ribs, teeth, limbs, and inner ear bones from older, adult, younger, and infantile individuals. There are some articulated or near-articulated elements, including skull with the jaw bone and nearly complete hands and feet. The number of individuals, both sexes, across the several age demographics, it is the richest assemblage of associated fossil hominids discovered in Africa. Aside from the Cima de los Huesos collection and later Neanderthal and modern human sample, the excavation site is the most comprehensive representation of skeletal elements across the lifespan and from multiple individuals in hominin fossil record. In two th- classification, in 2017, the Danaletti remains were dated. Um, I'm skipping classification. Anatomy. No, I'm skipping anatomy too. Build. Um, I'm skipping build. I just want. I don't have time to read all this, but I'm going to read some of it. Um, limbs. I don't know. I might skip lens. I'm going down to pathology. The adult right mandible, UW 101-1142, has a bony lesion suggestive of a benign tumor. Individuals would have experienced some swelling from localized discomfort, but the tumor's position near the medial pet pterygoid muscle likely causing discomfort of the jaw hinge may have impeded function of the muscle and changed elevation of the right side of the jaw. Um, Dental defects in homonoletti specimens during one to point six to two point eight and four point three to seven point six months of de- development were more likely caused by seasonal stressors. I'm skipping down to culture. That's what I'm really interested in. Okay, culture. Food. Dental chipping and wearing indicates the habitual consumption of 
small hard objects, such as dirt and dust, and cup-shaped wearing on the black teeth may have stemmed from gritty particles. These could have originated from unwashed roots and tubers. Alternately, aridly could, aridity could have stirred up particles particulates onto the food items coating food and dust. It is possible that the commonly ate larger, harder items such as seeds and nuts, but these were processed into small pieces before consumption. Homanoletti occupied a seemingly unique niche uh, from previous South African hominids, including Austro- Lophicus and Parathorphus. Teeth and other species indicate that they needed to exert high shearing force and chew through perhaps plant or muscle fiber. The teeth of Homo can not produce such high forces, perhaps due to to some of the food processing techniques, such as cooking. In December 2022, suggestions that Homo already used fire for light and cooking was reported. Technology. Though Homo already remains are not associated with any stone tools, it is likely they produced early Stone Age Achillean uh, and possibly the earlier Oldowan and or Midstone Age industries because they have some adaptations to the hands that other human species which are implicated in stone tool production. Nomenoledi was the only identified human species to exist during the Middle Stone Age of the High Fields region, South Africa, possibly indicating that this species manufactured and maintained in this tradition at least during this time period. Such industries and stone cutting techniques evolved independently several times during the homo species and populations were transported over long distances by the inventors and apprentices and taught funerals. In 2015, archaeologist Paul Dirks Berger and colleagues concluded that the bodies had been deliberately carried and placed in a chamber by people they um sorry one second um they by people where am I? had been deliberately heard of it by people because they appeared to have intact been intact when they were deposited in the chamber. There is no evidence of trauma from being dropped in the chamber, nor of predation, and there is exceptional preservation. The chamber is inaccessible to large predators, appears to be in an isolated system, and has never been flooded. That is, natural forces were not at play. There is no hidden shaft by which people could have accidentally fallen through. And then there is no evidence of some catastrophe which killed the individuals inside the chamber. They said it is also possible that bodies were dropped down the chute and fell slowly to irregularity and narrowness of the path, or a soft mud cushion to land on. In both scenarios, the morticians would have required artificial light to navigate the cave. The site was used repeatedly for burials, and the bodies were not deposited at the same time. In 2016, paleoanthropologist Arvival 
countered that such preservation may have been due to mummification rather than careful burial, and the absence of long bone heads is reminiscent of predation. And she believed that the discounted natural force, such as flooding for depositing the bodies, is unjustified. There is evidence of damage done by beetles, beetle larvae, and snails, and which facilitated decomposition. The chamber does not present ideal conditions for snails, nor does it contain snail shells, which would indicate decomposition initiated before deposition of the chamber. Deposition in the chamber. In 2000 and Twin, in 2017, Dirks, Berger, and colleagues reaffirmed that there is no evidence of water flow in the cave, and it is more likely that these homunnaledi were buried in the chamber. They said it is possible that they were buried by contemporary homo, such as the ancestors of modern humans, rather than the homunnaledi, but the cultural behavior of funeral practices is not impossible for homunnaledi, and burial in the chamber may have been done to remove decaying bodies from a settlement present scavengers are due to social bonding and grief. In 2018, anthropologists Charles Egland and colleagues echoed Val's sentiments and stated that there is insufficient evidence to conclude that human species had developed the concept of an afterlife so early in their evolution. They said that the presentation of Naledi, N N of Din Danaledi individuals is similar to the baboon carcasses, which accumulate in caves either by natural death or cave-dwelling baboons, or by a leopard dragging in carcasses. In 2021, following the analysis of the bone fragments of an immature individual, Juliet Brody, Brophy, and Berger once again claimed we hypothesized that the cranium remains and teeth were collected, we have collected at UW and 10 have resulted from CT for augmentation and partial or complete cranium deposited in this remote location. We regard it as likely that hominid agency was involved in the deposition of cranial material. Um, I would recommend watching Cave of Bones on Netflix because it seems like this isn't as updated as it is. <laughs> um, thanks for watching.